Good morning, and welcome to another edition of Food for Thought. It's Friday, March the 19th, 2021. I'm Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House. Glad you could join me for our devotions again. We continue on our journey through the devotions uh, talking about the parables of Christ. So um, today we're going to be focusing in on a parable of counting the cost. And it's found in Luke chapter 14, 25 to 33. And in this parable, Jesus said, Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, This person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. So when Jesus was speaking to the people in this parable, um, it appears that he's alluding to the idea that the work of his kingdom um, was much like building a building and also like a battle. On both accounts, um, unless one carefully considers the cost um, before committing, there may be a shortfall in the end, and each of these ventures are usually more costly than one thinks before beginning, so you need to ponder and to think about the cost of things. Now, we know that when somebody comes to Jesus Christ um, and gives their life to him, Jesus does a miracle in their lives. He, every one of us who's become a follower of Jesus has had this born-again experience, a miracle where we're changed from the inside and Jesus takes away our sin and the Holy Spirit is placed in our hearts in our spirits, and we become alive in Christ. And with that life comes change. So, um, Jesus is not saying here that people need to clean up their lives before coming to him. Because, you know, over the centuries, there's been many people that have tried to clean their lives up before they think they could come to church or become a Christian. And uh, that that's... Uh, that's not the way God has intended things. Um, you know, that's the gospel of works, um, suggesting that somehow we need to earn our right to be a child of God. There's nothing that we can actually do to earn our right to become a child of God. It's, it's only by His grace that we're saved through faith. It's not of works, not anything that we can do, because God, God wants us to come to Him and, and understand that even our righteousness is like filthy rags before him. There's nothing we can do to a holy God to please him and appease him in our own strength. Um, it's only his grace being applied to us. But, but that being said, you know, we can't leave people with the impression that um, when we share the gospel with them that Jesus won't want to clean up their lives when they come to him. The gospel uh, is that God, when he comes in, cleans us from the inside out when we come to him and we yield to him. But we must count the cost and be willing to submit ourselves to the cleaning and the changing that God does within us. And this is what uh, being a disciple is all about. A disciple is one who follows Jesus Christ. And one who follows wants to listen to what the leader says and submit themselves to the leadership. And in this case, the leadership of Jesus Christ. And to live in cooperation with him, doing things his way. Now, it's sad. I, I think it's sad that far too many people just prayed a prayer asking Jesus to be their savior without fully counting the cost of following Christ. And they're not willing to lay down 
themselves and let Christ be their master. Um, only partly so. They're only willing to let him into a compartment maybe in their lives, but not fully. But when we accept Jesus as our Savior, we come and we have to die to ourselves. We have to be willing to lay down our, our very sinful nature and lives and to pick up our cross and follow him. Um, there is a cost to being a disciple of Christ. You know, our fallen flesh wants to sin. There's a desire within each human being in the fallen flesh to sin. And we must be willing to give everything up to, to follow him. Now, the disciples did that when Jesus told them to follow him. They left everything and they followed him. You see, a person can't truly be a disciple of Christ unless they're willing to totally surrender to his lordship over them. It doesn't mean that we're not going to struggle sometimes and sometimes make bad decisions or mistakes. What it means is that we're to consider the cost and willingly come alongside the Holy Spirit and yield to his will to, to live a holy and obedient life to God. Now, when we come to Jesus, we count that cost and we say, I will follow. I'll lay it down. I don't know how it's even possible, God, that you can change my wicked heart, but nevertheless, I believe in you and I want you to come into my life and I want to make you my Lord and my Savior. See, this being said, okay, the Holy Spirit does call to people and sometimes people choose to reject and resist the call of the Holy Spirit. But I think in this parable, it, it, it alludes to the fact that we should count that cost as well. What possible good can come from opposing God? That's what the armies um, mentioned in this parable are all about. It, it costs something to be a disciple of Christ, but it costs way more to reject him. What Jesus is saying in the last half of this parable is to the people, listen, sit down and see if you can afford to refuse my demands. Now, the Lord is not willing that anyone should be lost, and his kingdom is a kingdom of light and of hope and of peace and of love. But he, he wants all people to repent of their sins and be cleansed by him. Everyone ought to weigh this out carefully. I mean, there's a cost to being a Christian, but there's a reward at the end for eternal life um, and an eternal bliss in the presence of God forever. But the cost of living your life for yourself and rejecting the gospel of God, the cost is huge. You see, when we push away from the table of God's grace, when we consider that his salvation is not needed, the Bible says that we push into the darkness. And if we die when we're in the darkness, there is eternal separation from God and an eternal place of punishment to pay for that. And that's something that Jesus does not want anyone to experience. His will is that none should be lost and that all should come to repent of their sins and come to him and be cleansed and saved. You see, if we truly see how much we need salvation, we will truly count all of the costs to becoming a disciple of Christ, but the costs of rejecting him as well. We need to weigh these things very carefully. If you're listening to this broadcast today and you've never genuinely counted the cost, I would like to echo what the Apostle Paul says in chapter uh, 5 of 2 Corinthians, verses 19 to 21. The Apostle Paul states, 
that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's trespasses against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God himself were making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for sin on our behalf, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see, my friend, all you need to do is believe and just lay down your resistance. Lay it down. Come unto Jesus. Give everything up to him and follow him, and he will give you his rest. And that's something that this, this world can never give you, the peace and the rest that God alone can give you. And once you've received it from him, the world can't take it away from you either. Now, believers, if you're hearing this message today, continue to submit to the will of the Lord afresh. Lord, help us to walk this walk in such a way that's pleasing to you and to run the race in such a way as to win the prize for which God has called us heavenward in Christ Jesus. If you do this today, Submit your, yourself to the Lord today. He will give you the strength that you need to face tomorrow in the power and the presence of the outpouring of his Holy Spirit in you. And he'll help you to live your life in abundance. God bless you today. This is Food for Thought.